It says going live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of St. Thomas Aquinas High School's Quarantine Edition, Baking Extraordinaire. I am your host, Matthew Roach. I'm a teacher at the school. I teach social studies. And here today, you are going to get an inside look into Mrs. Roach's baking factory and how she bakes her chocolate chip cookies. Now, I personally, though I look like a world-renowned chef with this nice apron on that says Mom's Kitchen, I personally do not know how to make these cookies. I know basic ingredients. So to help me, I've asked some special guests to come along. And the first guest I'm going to introduce to you is a face that many of you will be familiar with, Mr. John Roach. Give him a nice little round of applause. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited to be here cooking cookies. So, Mr. John Roach and I have spent as many years as we can remember with cookies surrounding us. Our entire life. Our entire lifetime. There have been cookies everywhere. On beds. And now, the person behind it all. Now, many of you know her as like a myth. She drops <laughs> cookies off, she leaves, it. you never actually see her, but you're going to get full view and you're going to get to ask any question you want to Mrs. Roach. About gonna, the cookies. About the cookies. And we're going to ask her some questions to start off as more people are logging on. So let's introduce our mom, Sharon Roach. Yay! We Come love on our in. mom. We love our mom. So this is the cookie lady. This is Sharon Roach. She is the mom of John and I who work at the school. But she also has a daughter, Katie, who is a counselor at St. Bart's in East Brunswick. And we have, she's between John and I age-wise. So it's John, then Katie, then me. And then we have Luke and Jude, who both graduated from Bishop Bar when it was Bishop Bar. So she has put five kids through five. the halls of one Tingley Lane. And only knows how many cookies have gone through there since 2002. Thousands and thousands and of thousands. cookies. And thousands. So, so thank you to all of you who have bought them at bake sales and bought them at plays and enjoyed them for all these years that my kids were at the school. And my kids aren't there and you're still enjoying them. Yes. So to get started, we're going to let people keep logging in. We are going to answer some questions as we go through. But to start, we're going to ask our mom some questions just to give you a little bit of an idea about who she is, how long she's been doing this, how this all got started. Yes. So we're going to ask a very basic question. When did you start baking? When did this all begin? My Nana, who I adored, started me when I was about two. two. Um, and I would go to her house and we would bake sugar cookies together. The frosted sugar cookies that you guys still eat um, are, my Nana taught me how to bake those. Oh. So it's been a really long time because I'm 59. So you guys do the math. It's a lot of years. Wow, you guys got the age. I was never going to go down that road, but she just told you how old she is. Now, she's been baking for a number of years. And the school is familiar with two major cookies. They get the sugar cookies and the chocolate chips. Yes. But there are tons more. There are tons. More. But before we get to that, we do have a surprise. Mr. John Roach found a picture of our great-grandmother. That's, That's Nana, Nana Ag and Pop. They, um, they both died in their 90s. When we were in high school and college, they lived wonderful lives. And as my mom told you, that's where she got her, her baking from. So, Mom, was, they know chocolate chips and sugar cookies. Yep. How many other types of cookies are there? Are there or are, that I made? That you've made. <laughs> oh, there's lots more that I've Lots more. Lots Could you more give us some I've examples made. of these lots more? I do a lot of different ones at Christmas that I don't really sell to the general public. So a favorite of my husband's are the spritz cookies that you do with the cookie press. Okay. And I make pecan crescents that the teachers really like. Yes. And I make scones and I make um, a chocolate with vanilla chips that my daughter is a little crazy about. And I make some good cranberry white chocolate that I know Mr. Fiore, or they're his loves, favorites. Loves those um, cookies. I made some chocolate mint cookies. I'm pretty much open to trying anything, but those are like wow. my molasses cookies you guys might have tried. Molasses, like a, yes, they're John's like a spice favorite. Cookie. Are they're John's favorite. So yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. Okay, so you've been baking all these different cookies. You told us you started baking with Nan Ag years and years ago. Yes. When did this whole business idea sort of or take mass, off? mass production. Or ma yeah, mass production. Because I, from my childhood, I remember staying up way past curfew because mom had cookies drying on my bed or cooling down. So when did this whole business begin? <laughs> the first order that I ever took was, I'm going to say about 25 years ago. I had a friend at St. Bart's who had a granddaughter that was being baptized. And she asked me if I would make cross-shaped cookies for the christening. 
And I wanted to do it just because she was my friend, which is what I'd always done with my cookies. And she said, no, 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 absolutely. I will not let you do that. I will only do it if you let me pay you. And I said, okay, well, you figure out what you think they're worth and oh, fine, I'll give in and I'll take the money. So that was actually my first real order. Things didn't get super crazy with the cookie biz until probably till Jude was in school full time. And he's okay. um, 19 now. So let's say crazy insanity probably for the last 15 years. And 15 years 15, of crazy Yeah, 15 years of crazy. And they are and telling the truth. There were many a night back in the day um, where I had to use their beds to dry hundreds of sugar cookies. And so we had some couch sleeping and some sleeping yes, bags sleeping. And, and so I think it's, I think they <coughs> should know too. It's not because, you know, our, we have a small house. It's only three bedrooms and one, one bathroom. bathroom, one bathroom and a, and a small kitchen. So, yes. you know, we cookies were everywhere. All right. So we're going to take a couple of questions we've gotten from our audience. So there are two questions we'd like to ask to start. Where is your Nana from and where did you grow up? Those are two questions we got. Ooh, My you? Nana that taught me? Yes, your Nana that My taught My Nana and Pop lived in South Amboy, okay. right on Borden 10 Avenue. Okay. And I grew up in East Brunswick, so they were maybe 10 minutes away from me most of my life. Actually, as was my dad's mom. She was on the other side of town. So um, so I was very lucky. I We were with them a lot, and I was at their house a lot, and, and okay. I miss all of them terribly. And what was your other question? Where are you from? I am from East Brunswick, New Jersey. And cool. she is the proud East Brunswick High School class president of her senior class. I was. So class she gets president. They, and her prom, they canceled the location on her. When was it? Like a month March. before? In March. March. They canceled having East Brunswick prom. <gasps> so she had to find a new location Scandal. to find. They this had is, this is how, crazy stuff. This is how old I am. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the East Brunswick Chateau. But that these Frontier Chateau was being built in 1979, which was the year I graduated high school. And they swore up and down that they would be able to accommodate 800 people for the prom because we had a class of 790. And March of that year, they reached out and they said, sorry, you're really out of luck. We can't, we can't fit you after all. So we did a lot of scrambling, and of all places, we were in the Pines in Edison, which I'm sure many of you yes, are. Yes, many of you at the Pines, man. Yes. Yeah, so, all right, yes. so we're going to get rolling. So yeah. what we're going to do now is we are going to go through the ingredients that go into oh. Roche cookies, and we're going to look at how we end up with the Roche cookies. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the laptop up that we're streaming from, and we're going to zoom in on a couple of the different ingredients. And Mrs. Roach is going to take us through what this all looks like, and we're going to put it all together. This is really inside, in-depth here. Not so many what, people get to see this. What do we this have in form. this bowl to start, Mrs. Roach? This is Roche. a pound of melted butter. A pound of butter. Okay, so, so that's going in the bowl. So a lot of people ask me, um, why are your chocolate chips so puffy and so cakey? And it's because I melt the butter to liquid. And when you do that, you end up having to put in more flour to not make the dough sticky. Okay. And so the flour puffs up the cookies, and they're more cakey than they are cookie. Okay, like so as you're putting the ingredients, because now we're cracking some eggs and we're putting eggs in. And by the way, this is a double batch because Ooh. I'm usually because I'm usually baking for all of you guys, um, and we always do hundreds. Single batches batch. don't exist. Single batches don't really exist in my world anymore. So, um, so every batch of cookies I make, it's usually a double batch of chocolate chips, and it's okay. usually a triple batch. Of and those are whole cookies. eggs, right? Okay. That go in. Yes. We have another question from eggs. the audience. Yes. They asked, in your lifetime doing this, how many ovens have we gone through? Oh, how many? That's ovens? the question. This is my this oven is my fourth. Um, so let yeah, this is our newest oven. This ooh, is the fanciest uh, convection oven. Yes, it's it's wonderful. It's but it's only three fire. racks though. No, this oven, this <laughs> oven came about because I accidentally set fire to our old one, and that lasted for like another couple of months, but it did not run the same. So my dad who's just foregoing retirement at this point. There's no <laughs> such thing. He bought another oven to replace this one. That was my Christmas present last year. Look at this. Christmas is based around cooking. This is what you should get out of this, though. Always check your oven that there's nothing in it before you turn it on. That's probably a good idea. All right, so we have butter and eggs in. Okay. What else are we adding? We're going to add... All right, now, my kids make fun of me. Actually, everybody makes fun of me. About this much baking soda. This much. It's a little more than a teaspoon. It's not quite a tablespoon. This much. So in case you're writing this down, this much. All okay. right. What is this? This is, I don't know, boys and girls, what would you say? <laughs> like a tablespoon of salt, maybe? My mom's palm <laughs> of salt in the in the bowl. Okay. What this we got? This is my favorite. This I is... never buy real vanilla. I'm sorry, but it's like $18 for a teeny little bottle. So we buy this giant bottle of imitation, imitation. vanilla. Imitation. All right. 
because we're thrifty during the quarantine. And that's how much vanilla I put in. So just squirts. Okay. Two squirts. Just a giant. All right, so giant. we're mixing this all up. But what else are we adding here? Okay, we got a couple of ingredients here. A cup. It should be a cup and two thirds. It's more like a cup and almost another cup. <laughs> okay, a cup and two thirds of what? What was Light that? brown sugar. Light brown sugar. What and we then got? The same on white sugar. A cup and two thirds of white sugar. Well, a cup okay. And three quarters. Okay, three quarters. <laughs> Sorry, math was never my thing. Okay, and that's it. So you put all that stuff in together. All right. So to recap, we've got four eggs, a pound of butter, melted, melted butter. We've got a couple of ham, like a handful of salt, a little bit of baking soda. Mm -hmm. Some brown Two sugar, some white sugar, and, and now we mix it. Now, bread. as we mix it, and John's going to zoom in real well oh. for us there. Wow, look at that. All right, so we're mixing it all up. Can I just, I, I, yeah, need, to, yes, I need to say whatever. this too, because I take a lot of abuse from my family. If John could turn the camera. A few years ago, my family decided that they should buy me an industrial mixer. That That's what they use in being One people. horsepower. That actually One horsepower was, engine. It shakes the room. It was so big that it had to be delivered to Bishop R because they would only deliver it to a place that had a loading dock. And so they delivered it to Bishop R and my husband had it transported here and they slug it in here on Christmas Day. And I have to be honest with you, I used it twice. Three, four Test times. Run the and whole then room shook. The it whole felt room like shook an earthquake. And it was flour awesome. exploded at the top. And I thought, this isn't I can't helping do me. This. So much to everyone's dismay, I really because and, and I've also, in addition to ovens, I've blown out um KitchenAids. Those probably, small things that probably, you probably have. This is professional 600. That's yeah. the kind of mixer we have. Um, I've blown out like six of those. So anyway, I found it was easier to just make all the dough. Do it by hands. hand. All so, right. So let's get back to this. We okay. mixed this up. What else do we need to add now we into this? Add so we've flour. got four eggs. we got a bunch of other ingredients. Now we're adding flour. How much? Uh, well... This about, looks like a lot. About six cups. That, six cups of flour. That are like oh my gently God. rounded. How many bags of 25 pound bags of flour do you go through in a week? If you're, well, if it it's depends. a big cookie week, how many do you go it's through? It's a big cookie week. Big cookie week. Like, like Maybe our star two, mass Christmas. Uh, two and a half. So that's like 65 pounds of flour in one week of baking. And for everybody that's oh, listening. got the big thing. For everybody that's listening, though, we are going to post the recipe for you so that you can yes, see. Because we we're seeing some people are missing the ingredients. It's okay. okay. So we'll post it so for you. So let's dump. We've got chocolate cup chips now. And like a heavy half. Okay, a cup and a little bit more than a half of chocolate chips. And now let's zoom in on this because this is where it really starts to take form. We're mixing it all together. And as we mix it all together, you're going to start to notice we're going to get a, a solid mixture that we're going to clump together and we're going to actually turn to cookies. Now, while mom is doing that, I'm going to zoom in on this. He's this is our nephew, Emmett, today. who turned four months old today. Yay, and we hope Emmett's Emmett. watching from home in the quarantine, but he turned four months old today. And he's just as cute today with his four months pictures. Just as, as cute. Is. And we are and so lucky again. and we pamper him like crazy. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. The other thing I'm going to tell you, you probably can't hear them, but outside right now, we have three dogs outside who normally are running rampant throughout the house, but we kept them outside for the sake of quiet and so that we didn't have to really deal with that. Um, but they're outside playing. We have a number of different animals as well. And now we can zoom in. We're starting to get actual chocolate and just, chips. And just so you know, um, I did have to add a little bit extra flour. So you just Ooh. do it. Just add as much until when you mix the dough, it doesn't feel like it's sticky. Okay. So non-sticky dough, that's important. And remember, we are going to post the ingredients as we go through this. We have three kinds of dogs. Well, two are my parents, and I brought my dog over. So I have an American foxhound named Oliver who's outside, and he loves coming for playdates here. And then my mom and dad have two dogs. We have Belle, who is a greyhound, and we have Tess, who is an English setter spaniel. And both of them are adorable, and they love having playdates. And so we love bringing them over. They're outside right now. At the end of the video, we're going to let them in when this settles down a little bit. All right, so now we have our mixture. And what are we going to do now? So I use these cookie sheets, but this works on any cookie sheet. Because okay. there's so much butter in this dough, you don't have to grease the sheets. Look at that. Saving and ingredients. Here's where, here's where it's obvious that I'm never going to be on Food Network. You know the people that do this? They take their two little spoons, and they do this, and they do this, and then they scrape it in. That's not what I do. This is what we do. We take a giant blob and we just blob it down. Look at this. How easy, guys, how yeah. easy is this? Giant blobs plob down on the pan and that's And this is the magic one. of how they're how they're roach cookies and, and they're not just chocolate chips. And this is why you guys chips. get these giant hockey puck shaped cookies. 
So and we for, should get some bang for your buck. And for all of you stuff. watching yes, quarantine, you everyone in this kitchen washed their hands yeah, prior to starting. So don't be panicking that uh, the okay, cookies so we we're got, making are we not. We did get a question uh, from the audience. They're asking, what are our personal favorite cookies? Uh -oh. So let's start with that. So I am much more partial to the chocolate chips than I am to the sugar cookie. I'll take a turn. Hold but it. Um, my, I don't like the chocolate chips fresh out of the oven. Like I'd rather they be a couple days old and a little stale. Because, like they, because they're better that way. But if you want to catch me on a good day, I take a stale cookie in a bowl, put it in the microwave for 20 seconds, and then put vanilla ice cream on top of it, and it like melts into the cookie. Okay. And so that's the best type. Okay. Mom, favorite kind of cookie? Oh, or do you get sick man. of them? Do you get sick of the cookies? I do. <gasps> Sorry. She gets sick of them. If I'm in the mood, um, I actually, I'm with Mark Fiore. I like, okay. the, um, I like the cranberry white chocolate. Okay. Now, my personal favorite, I love cookies that are called Almond Crescents. And the Almond Crescents, I think they were only at the 50th anniversary gala. And I think there are only a couple of students who have ever had them. But I know that Sister Cindy loves the Almond Crescents. <laughs> yes, if you want to get on Sister's good side, order some Almond Crescents and show up with about 100 and she will love you forever. <laughs> now, she may talk bad about you when it happens and she'll say, how dare you give these to me? But the Almond Crescents are to die for. Now, we're starting to see that our tray is becoming full. And we now are going to see what the inside of her oven looks like because we're coming up to switching time. Yeah. We have one minute and then we're going to have to rotate. And the reason we rotate, this is fascinating, but the science behind the cookies is when you have three trays of cookies in, one on top of the other, the heat hits the cookies all differently. So there have been many a time where John Roach or myself or anybody else who's home has had to keep rotating trays to keep the business profitable. To make sure that they're running. not gonna burn. To make it burn. You don't so want your burn we're gonna open this up, we're gonna see what we got. Wow, look at that. So we got three trays of cookies going here. I'm gonna go off to the side so you don't get blinded by the light. Now, Mr. John Roach is gonna take them out and he's gonna rotate them. Yeah. Mrs. Roach, how do we rotate these cookies? Um, you're gonna take the bottom one and put it on top. Okay, bottom goes to top. Middle goes to bottom. Middle goes to bottom, and that means top, top goes, goes to, to middle. middle. Look at this. This is the science behind what occurs in this household. Now, she has to do this for her entire thing. So these cookies were in for 20 minutes to start, and then after the rotation, they get another eight minutes. So you have 20 minutes with them in normal. You rotate after 20 minutes, and then you do eight minutes with the new rotation. And that's how we go Did through we this. Did we tell them about the oven and the temperature? I don't know if we- We didn't that. tell them about the oven. That's a good good idea. So what's our oven temperature? Well, we have convection bake, which convection means that bake. it has a fan okay. that helps to circulate the air a little bit better. Okay. And we have it set to 340 because you don't want it as high as if it was a standard oven because you would burn your cookies. Oh, true. All right, yeah. now you said that this is something where even if we didn't have a convection bake oven, you could still bake these. Yeah, is that you the case? Bake them at 350 degrees, and again, you don't have to make them as big as I do. You don't have to make them um, on the same cookie sheets that I do. Okay. Um, if you are a baker, like if you're used to baking cookies, you know when they're done. You know the edges get a little brown, and you touch them on top, and they're not squishy, and they're okay. done. And sometimes you just have to practice a little bit to get it to come out. Okay. The right now way. we have finished baking the cookies, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to let the dogs come in because all the ingredients are done now. So we're going to open it up to the true chaos that is normally the Roach House. We're going to see how this goes, and then we'll take some final questions. Yes. We'll talk a little with my mom, and then we'll be done. So Nana Shower is going to go, and she's going to open that hi. door, and she's going to say hi. Hi, everybody. So this is Oliver, Belle, and Tess. There they are. So let's come back here. Come here. Hi, Belle. Look, so here's everybody. Hi, buddy. So this... <laughs> The black dog here is Oliver. This hi, is Belle, the hi. tallest. And that is Tess, the one who's scared of her own shadow and is petrified of everything. Those are our, the three dogs. Two of them are my parents. Oliver here is mine. He's my wife and I's dog. And all of them have stolen cookies at one time or another. And they don't care if they're cooked. They don't care if they're raw. I have they walked into them. the kitchen and found empty spaces on my cookie sheets. So I've gotten much yeah. better about... Um, putting everything up when I'm not in the kitchen with them. So we are coming up to what would have been normal tax season, yes. April 15th, which social studies people got extended to July, Look hashtag coronavirus. All right. uh, how many cookies did you donate in the year 2019? 
23,638. 23,638 cookies were donated last year. And I had, donated. And so I you, had you to, didn't make a single penny no, off of those cookies. And I, and I had to figure out that number because I do make so many donations and I do at least take some credit on my taxes for it. Mm -hmm. So I had to add up what I made, which varieties I made, how much they were per batch, and then work out the math, and that's what it ends but up being. But just, so. just even if you like lower that and times twenty thousand by like fifteen for the fifteen years you've been doing it, like that's, that's a, a ton of cookies. That's like three hundred. That's a ton of cookies. Just donated. That's not even the ones you made. Okay. That's just so donated. Let's, let's go rapid fire on some questions. Let's start with this. What is the coolest cookie, or, or in your opinion, the coolest cookie you get to make, like shape wise? When you do the the icing on them, you decorate them all up and make them look all nice. What's your favorite one to make? You think like, wow, that is a good cookie. I like my Easter cookies. Your Easter cookies. And that's cookies. why I'm a little sad okay. about coronavirus because they're my favorite ones to make. True. I just like the colors. I like the shapes. Okay. I like that whole like, you know, yay, spring is coming. I like all okay. the colors. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Do you want to know about the weirdest cookie ever? Sure. Yes, of course. So my husband's brother is a biology teacher at High Tech High School down in Lincroft. And they had a birthday thing where everybody chose names out of a hat. And my brother-in-law got another science teacher as his pick. And he asked me if I would make a calculator that had a bell curve and a, what's the other curve? I don't know. What, I don't know. Whatever. This is a non- Where are our math teachers? Where is stands against Psychowski? Non-science and math house. But anyway, so I had, I made this cookie that was as big as a calculator and I used Pez candies for the buttons and I- it took forever. I had to make like a little form so that the whole calculator was black, but then I had a little window that had to be gray for the oh face. And gosh. it took hours and hours. And thank God he only needed two dozen of them. But I still, that cookie haunts me in my dreams because it took yes. a really long time. All right. Two, two more off the top. Uh, where did you get the recipes from? Are these family recipes? Is there a secret ingredient that like we can't tell them that we left off, off screen? No, that no. would be me. So where so did no. we get these um, recipes? The sugar cookie recipe was from my Nana's 1936 Good Housekeeping Cookbook. 1936. Um, when I was taught to make them, my grandparents were obviously people of the depression. And so my grandmother um, only used Crisco, which is that white lardy stuff that comes in a can. I okay. hate Crisco. It sticks on everything. You can't get washed it off your stuff. Okay. Um, so I started using butter. And so my, my grandmother's cookies were very crispy, whereas mine are very soft. Um, Mr. Roach, John Roach, um, is actually more of a fan of my Nana's cookies than of mine. I can still remember them. And they she, were yeah, John, super John skinny to remember, and yeah. lemony. Like she put lemon in yeah, them, so there was like a lemon yeah. ice yeah. drizzle okay, on it. Yeah. Here's here's another question we have for you. Um, during this quarantine, are you still baking cookies? Are people allowed to order cookies from you if they want? Yes, <gasps> yes, they are. Um, you heard it. You can order cookies. Okay. From you Mrs. don't Roach. have. Do not. This is not a ploy. This is not, this this is is not, not a sales yeah, tactic. This is not a sales we are thing. just offering The truth this. of the matter, I have to be honest with you. This is the coronavirus, and I sound like a whiny two-year-old, but the coronavirus totally obliterated the cookie business because pretty much everything that I had queued up was christenings and first communions and weddings, and obviously everybody's either canceled or postponed their events. So I'm hoping that when we come out of this, that I'll just go right back to my other People life. are going to want the cookies. But the other yes. thing I have to be really honest with you too, is that um, I was watching Emmett and when Katie was a little four month old. Nephew, our four -month -old. And so, and now obviously I'm not doing that either because Katie is quarantining herself down in, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. So, so yeah, so I, it was kind of a, like a real smack upside the head for me to kind of like everything kind of went Quiet, which is why we're happy to be able to spend this afternoon. I am. With I'm you very happy to be doing on this YouTube. For you. and okay, so sorry. That's okay. I'm done. So we have our last statements before we wrap up. Okay, so two things. One, a lot of people now are asking how do they order them, and the easiest way to order is I'm going to give you to her cell no. phone number. Right? No. To, <laughs> so the easiest way to order to them email is Mr. To email Matthew Roach. Mr. Matt Roach, M R O C H E at sths.net. You have to order. You're only getting sugar, chocolate chip. We can't, you don't go, get the we can't go insane. She Sorry, have family all the secrets. And with the quarantine, it's tough. So you can order. We're going to put a limit of one dozen. We cannot have dozens this of people. This is really a shameless sales pitch. And that's what not, yes. this was not what this was supposed to we be. We cannot have dozens of people ordering. But if you're interested, you can email me. The last thing we're going to say. dollars a dozen. Yes, dollar cookie. The last thing we're going to say is that we are so grateful to our mom for all the work that she does. Because we know that she has sacrificed a ton. We have not gone on many family vacations.
because we've gone through Catholic, Catholic school. school for Cookies have helped to help pay for us and finance us going to Catholic school. So it's a big sacrifice. And everything she does, she does with love, with love because she has such a big heart. I cannot tell you how many mornings we would wake up, get ready for school, and there would already be like 300 cookies already cranking out of the oven. So she does this all from the goodness of her heart. If you are interested in sending a lovely, positive, uplifting note oh, or thank you geez. to Mrs. Roach to get her to cry even more, we can live stream that too as she reads them. That's terrible. Stop it. But no. you can email me or John any of the nice comments you have for our mom. It was such a fun time being able to do this. We all had a great time. And watch the social media links. We will get pro the, uh, the recipe. We will post the out. recipe. And look at that right on cue. The cookies are done and ready to be taken out. And the best way to celebrate the fact that we have finished is I'm going to eat one straight off the pan, burning hot, and we're going to see what happens. Actually, I'm going to give you two more Never mind. Two more minutes. <laughs> no, those those are good. Oh, those are good. All right. I'm just wimping out. This seems way too hot. That was my leg. Sorry. Also, last question. How many times do you think you've burned yourself? Oh, not too much. I'm not. I'm really? Good. No, I'm pretty good like I've, that. I've done this like five times. I think I've burned myself every single time. I'm pretty good. Well, it has been a pleasure. We hope you guys enjoyed this. We are so sorry that we're going through this quarantine right now. But hopefully but this put hopefully a smile on your face. This put a smile on your face for a little bit of time. And if we get good feedback, maybe we'll do another and we'll have we'll have mom do something else. Because this has been a wonderful experience for all of us. So God bless all of you. We wish you all the best. And we're signing off. Thank you.